Welcome back. Our next guest has a long and varied history as an actress, a singer, a performer, uh, Broadway off Broadway, LA TV and film. I'm not going to give it all away because she's here with her newest and latest project. And I'm so excited to introduce you to Brooks Almy. Brooks, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much, Lauren. I'm really glad to be here. It is a pleasure. And you are actually wired in from Italy. I am, where and, we live on a hilltop. And we love that. And as we just learned across from the church and the very loud bells that ring yes. a number of times a day. <laughs> yeah, they, they ring every hour on the hour. They ring once on the half hour. At seven o'clock in the morning, they go crazy because they're saying, farmers, farmers, get up and work. Because it's, it's, they're historical bells. Which is, and, uh, oh, they also go crazy on Sundays. <laughs> and while they are beautiful, they were still too loud for us to record over. So here Absolutely. we are. <laughs> and I'm going to let you tell us a little bit about how you ended up in Italy, because I know you were LA based. I was LA based at the time, but I was also, um, I, okay, I, Fell in love in 1977 with a lovely Italian nurse. I was on a cruise ship. He was the nurse. I was the actress. I was doing Barefoot from the Park. We fell in love. When his uh, company sent him back to Italy, we couldn't solve being together because there was no money. We were both just newly in our careers. We had we were just like, and we couldn't we couldn't figure it out. And it was so tragic. And so time went by, uh, we, we tried to sort of stay connected, but we didn't, and finally uh, lost each other completely. Well, when internet happened, I, you know, I would poke his name in every once in a while, just to see, I wonder how he's doing, and I could never find him. In 2006, uh, an article came up on a Canadian newspaper that was uh, about a nurse in Afghanistan taking care of children who had been blown up by landmines. And it was him. And he worked for an NGO called Emergency. So I, I got excited about trying to find him. So I tried and I couldn't, couldn't find him anywhere. I tried, I even went as so far as to call Italian information, not speaking a word of Italian. Yeah, it, it, it was not my, it was not my smartest move. So anyway, uh, Two years later, I was at a wedding and I was sitting next to two boys from Italy, from Piemonte. And uh, I, I was telling them this story about trying to find this guy and they were they were laughing. And they said, well, we'll try and find him. And I was like, oh, okay. I never thought I'd hear from them again. I didn't know them. So off they went. Um, that was on Sunday. The next Friday, the phone rang and it was Roberto and Alessandro. And they said, um, Brooks, we found him, we called him, we gave him your number. He was looking for you too. Oh, I have chills. <laughs> you know, and, and, and the next day my phone rang and there was this beautiful deep basso voice saying, Joe Brooks. And I was like, oh, and it was him. And uh, we stayed on Skype and all of that for six months just catching up on the you know last 40 years of our lives. And uh, we so we did that. And then in January, he said, I have holiday in February. Should I come over? And I was like, yeah, that'd be good. And so I was very nervous because, I, you know, you don't know if it's going to be the same. You don't know. He arrived. It was the same. It took us 12 hours to decide that it was permanent and that we were going to figure it out. So from then... That was 2009. We got married in 2011, even though not, neither of us had intended to, but we did, and we were so happy we did it. But we, it, the way that we solved this, because he was still a nurse in, in Italy, I was still acting and teaching in Los Angeles. So we just said, we're just gonna go back and forth and then live on Skype when, when we're not together. So we managed to work it out so that we were together maybe seven or eight months out of the year between the two of our holidays going back and forth. So sometimes he was in LA and sometimes I was in Italy. Well, then came COVID. And when COVID happened, um, we came to the 
to our little hilltop in Italy, uh, to our forever house that we had bought a couple of years ago. And we, and we came to our forever home and uh, I accidentally retired <laughs> because I was so happy to be here. And this, uh, and so that's how I ended up on a hilltop in Italy with a beautiful Italian husband who cooks for me. And an amazing I'm story lucky. that all of us think that's the book we're going to be talking about. But guess what? It no, is not. not that book. It's not. Although I think sometime I might write, I might write that book. That would um, be a wonderful book. And I'm sure we would all love to read it. But yeah, as you became accidentally retired, you also became the author of a book called The Accidental Pirate. You have a lot of happy accidents and wonderful yeah. storytelling to share. Tell yeah. us a little bit about the book and how it came to be. Well, it, it came, it, it was an idea that I had in 1974 from, from a, reading a book about women pirates and all the famous women pirates were in it. And then there was this little paragraph about Fanny Campbell, went to sea, uh, disguised as a man, became a pirate to rescue her husband in Cuba. That was it. But that stayed with me. And uh, uh, somewhere in the 2000s, I, I took a, a writing workshop for fun. Because I had never, I'd always written, you know, little song lyrics and little stories. And I, and I got through school writing well, you know, because I turned in good essays, because I never studied. But I turned in good essays, because I wrote well. Being a good storyteller so, is quite an art form. Yeah, you know, it, it's and I and I and I'm 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 lucky that that was also I was a reader from like five years old. I read everything. I read. I stole a flashlight from my father and read under the covers, and you know, and I read and I got to where I was reading like five and six books a week because I, because I was you know, and also I was very very shy. And so books were where I hid and they made me really, really happy. So th that being said, I didn't think I was a writer. I did, that, that was not what I thought I was. So I, uh, I took this writing workshop and it was really fun and I learned a lot. And I, and I wrote a couple of chapters of this book. I wrote like the first three chapters of this book. And, and then life intervened again. I got busy with, with, uh, with my career, I was acting more and, and you know, just, I just got busy. So I stopped, I stopped doing it because I didn't think it was something I was really going to do anyway. When we got here and we were in lockdown, this story, which must have been percolating in the back of my brain this entire time, just came whooshing out onto the paper. It just, it, it, and it really did. I wrote, I wrote for hours every day. I wrote longhand first. I wrote, uh, I have stacks of, of um, uh, lined notebooks from like when you were a kid. I have stacks of them that are all chapter one. Ah, and, you know, and, uh, and then I, 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 then I entered it in the computer and then I started, uh, um, I didn't, I didn't revise it until it was done. I didn't, I, I, I didn't at all. And then when it was done and when I thought, that's okay, good. I, that, that's, that's a good story. I'm happy with that. And this character, I am in love with this character. Her name is Fanny Campbell and she's 18 years old and she is fierce and, and capable and funny. And, uh, and also she's in 18th century Rhode Island. So she's, and she, she's not what a girl is supposed to be. So, so she does not fit in. She's an oddball because she rides horses. Her father taught her, she and her mother, how to fight with swords. You know, she, she's just not your an everyday average girl. But she, she was everything that I always wished I was. And I wasn't. I am now, my husband tells me. <laughs> but uh, but she, she's just like I said, fierce and funny and kind and, and brave. And, and, uh, she's, she's a, she's a good person, but don't make her mad. You know, don't hurt, don't hurt someone she loves, yeah. you know, don't be mean to animals. Uh, she's, she's a fierce girl. So she's anyway, she's the kind of girl a lot of us wish we could be or were. Were. Yeah. You know, and I was, you know, I was, a, I was a, a fat little, 
ch military child with bangs and braids and no front teeth until I was 11. You know, I was just a mess. And, and, but in my imagination, I was all of those things. And when I first saw Peter Pan, you know who I wanted to be? Captain Hook. Really? Yeah. Okay. I wanted to be Captain Hook. The inner pirate came right out. I wanted to be, because he danced around and he had so much fun and everybody had to do what he said, you know, and I wanted to be Captain Hook. And I, I would have sword fights with myself out in the ravine on trees, you know. Um, so this, this character who, who I, I dearly love has, has just come to life in a, in a, in a really wonderful way for me. And as she got on the page and, uh, this, <laughs> an accidental pirate is because she, she goes to see disguised as a man to rescue her husband, Will, who has been imprisoned in Cuba and no one will help her government won't help so she she goes to see her she's on a horrible ship her ship is attacked by a pirate ship that you know they they fight the pirates and they lose and they think they're all going to be killed and this particular pirate ship has a different way of doing things and this particular pirate ship says all right um you are all cowards so you get in the boat and we'll put you away you two, there were two, three, you three fought well and hard. Good for you. Would you like to join us? And Fanny says, uh, yes, thank you. I would, because she just wants to be on a ship. Sure. She just wants to be going south to Cuba. And so she, she, she's, she's reluctant, but needs to. So she joins and uh, they, you know, she signs an agreement because this is something that pirates actually do. They have an agreement that all of their crew members sign. And I, I, I didn't make this part up. I, I know way more about pirates than anybody should know. And I, <laughs> so, so they, and, and this, their agreement was, was very clear. And you don't get your hand chopped off if you steal. That's not because okay. I, like I said, this is a different kind of a pirate ship because this captain is a, his name is Captain John Thorne, and he is a wonderful captain who was forced into piracy by circumstance. And he he absolutely attacks ships. He absolutely will fight if he has to, but he'd rather not. He'd rather not kill anyone. He will, but he'd rather not. So, and and his entire crew has that same philosophy. So, well, uh, it's so definitely it's, a different kind of pirate story than we're accustomed to. Absolutely. Yeah. While your while your character is you know probably in that young adult lit kind of uh, time frame, it sounds to me, and this is actually my plan, is to read this together with my twelve year old niece because oh, yeah. this is the kind of girl she is and wants to be. And what better way to instill those characteristics than give her characters she can model after? She can, she so, can model after, and she can relate to. You know, yeah. that's it. Well, I'm so part. glad you said that because one of the things I didn't set out in my brain to write this to be an empowering thing for girls, but that's what it turned out to be, you know. And we're so and, grateful because we really can't get enough of that and the yeah. opportunity to actually you have because you have both a very, a very strong and um and well-developed key character, but then all of the other characters around her are also lessons that we can learn. So very, thank very you much so, very much so. And and there are lessons in how to handle adversity, because there's a lot of adversity. And uh there's uh yeah, it's uh there one of the things that I do in this book, and that's why it's also it's listed in historical fiction, because I've tried very hard to make the history, the history accurate. Excellent. The rest of it's all fiction. But I've tried to make the history accurate. And for example, her father, Gerald Campbell, um, uh, he, he says, he says, we're Campbell's my bonnie lass. We will never be slaves to the dictates of tyrants. You know, and he he was the, the youngest armorer in Scotland. 
and he was at the Battle of Culloden and he was on the wrong side. And so he had to, you know, they, they tried to kill him and he had to flee. And that's how he ended up in US. Got it. And Everybody so there, without giving too much away, because I want our viewers to go look for it. So where okay. can find where can they find the accidental pirate? Well, it's on Amazon. Uh, you can find it on Amazon. You can find it on my website, brooksalmy.com. You can order it there. It's in bookstores. It's actually in some Barnes and Nobles, I have been told. I have not gone in to find out, but I thought that was kind of exciting. Um, well, I love being able to support bookstores. And the truth yeah, is, truth. we love to promote and support great writing and fun Thank writing you. and storytelling and and things that can join the generations together. And I think you've accomplished all of that. So an unusual swashbuckling <laughs> <laughs> a partnership here of a great story, great characters, and just a fun time and an opportunity to bring us together with the olders and the youngers in our family. Brooks, yeah. thank you so much for joining us today. Warren, and thank you so good much. Good luck with the book. And we're thank looking you. forward to finding it for ourselves. And we'll be right back.